You are listening to the Gritty Podcast, where we talk about all things gritty. Life is not easy. It never was, and it never will be. A good life takes grit. Prioritize who you are and who you want to be, because life isn't fair, and a little grit can make all the difference. Welcome to the Gritty Podcast. I am your host, Brian Call, and I am joined by my brother, the Gritty Broman. What's up, folks? And uh, Brent, what's today's podcast about? Today's podcast is about bedrolls. It is, with our friends from Canvas Cutter. Uh, we ran into them at the Western Hunt Expo. We ambushed them at the Western yeah, Hunt Expo. which we basically threw our podcast equipment in a backpack and then walked around with it. Uh-huh. And interviewed people just randomly. So, and it was hit and miss. <clears throat> it was the audio was you know it 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 sometimes was good, sometimes it was struggled well, a little bit. Some people had a little booth, and we could go into the booth, and we could get a little quieter. And some people were on the side of a, of a busy aisleway, and there was like five thousand people who walked by in the ten minute podcast. Yeah, and so some audio is less than optimal Stellar. than others. Yeah, yeah. This one is one that's a little scratchy. <laughs> Sorry, folks, but it's a great show. And it's with our buddy Seth Larson. His dad, Cheryl Larson, came up with this canvas cutter bedroll. Cheryl. Cheryl. And it's funny. We call Cheryl Father Wisdom. When I first heard of canvas cutter, I was like, this is dumb. Like you're a canvas bedroll. <laughs> a like, bedroll? What is this, the 1850? Yeah. Like, I'm not, I'm not in the Civil War era here. There's more modern pieces of equipment. I yeah, can when use. you hear bed roll, I automatically think <clears throat> you're like some kind of cow puncher and you're <laughs> eating slabs of bacon and beans every day. <laughs> so there you have it, folks. Brent's breakdown. But what was cool was I got one and then I used it and now I'm a huge fan of it. Uh, it's like having your own like mini wall tent, except no work involved. So it's a great product. I've talked about it multiple times. And what's cool is they're giving us a discount code. Again, Great. Brent and I aren't getting paid for any of this. We got to work on that. But we're not good salesmen. Yeah, we're not. But these guys are awesome, good friends of ours. And I've got a couple free bedrolls from them in the past. And I just love what they're doing. And I want them to blow up into the stratosphere because they're good people and they make a cool product. And I think you would love it if you hunt cruising up to the mountain and you're just you're you're going to spend the night up there. You just throw that bed roll out on the ground, or I like to bring a cot, throw it up on a cot, and the mattress it comes with is super thick and plush. Your sleeping bag's already in there. I already have a toiletry kit inside my canvas cutter that's always there, so I can like brush teeth, do all that stuff, crawl crawl right in the sack, go to sleep, and it's in the back of my truck at all times. So if I ever need to just pull over and sleep, Great I got a, I got my own little castle. The thing's completely waterproof, windproof, warm. You you climb inside and it zips closed. And there's these hoops, these these tent, tent stakes, poles. tent poles inside that p- prop it up, and it's just super convenient. It takes like two seconds, two minutes, minute to pop up. You're in, you go to sleep, and then in the morning you just roll it back up, toss it in your truck, and you're hunting again. If you're gonna use a tent, you're better off using these. The only caveat because. I, uh-huh. With a tent, you're most likely to be sharing it with someone else, and sharing sucks. <laughs> well, the thing is, is about this is um, if it's raining a lot and you want a place to hang out, mm-hmm. it's not as ideal. But if it's not raining and the weather's you know fairly decent, like when we were out hunting elk uh, this last year, I slept in the canvas cutter for a week, and it was awesome because – we were kind of truck hunting up roads and then we'd get out and crash in the tent. And then we'd spike camp a couple of days up with our tents. And then we'd spend a couple of days on the road again, doing different glassing from different points on back roads and How come you're saying it's less optimal if it's raining? Why is that? Because it's it keeps you completely dry and mm-hmm. that's fine. If you're just going to get up, get out and get right back in your truck or whatever, that's fine. But – if you're rained out, I should say, mm-hmm. if if you need a place to like hang wet gear, 
If you oh. need a place to get a stove going or something like that to dry out gear, that mm-hmm. kind of thing, you know, it's it's just a it's really a bedroll. That's what it is. So it, it's ideal for most of what we do, mm-hmm. and in most most hunts. And I've used it. We used it in the, the snow where we, these things we got snowed on on top of our canvas cutters. Like I don't know. That's it's four or five, six inches. It's pretty sweet. You got some epic pictures. We got of that some videos too. of it and stuff. This was on our elk hunt from last year before last with Anthony and Ben and and the, our their boys. But it's a great product. So we'll uh, get into that that show in a minute here. The code is gritty fifteen, and that is uh, at canvascutter.com. So if you go there and check it out, uh, you'll see what the what the deal is and i haven't met anybody who has used one that isn't a huge fan of it so um it's it it really is a super handy piece of gear so that is a canvascutter.com and they were also mentioning and they mentioned it in the podcast briefly that they're coming out with a new product they are a couple of them and so we get into that in the podcast and then uh also that we're going to do a giveaway on social media for the new one of the new products they've got newer products so look for that just in the next week or so we're going to do a little giveaway a little canvas cutter giveaway so probably through instagram we got the hoyt bow giveaway sign up for our newsletter at briancall.com giveaway is on april 1st to be entered to win you just sign up sign up for the newsletter folks and then Brent, there's there's something some things that I like lately. I I have been watching YouTube, and um, I came across and have been watching the Mountain Project. You sh- you should go check it out if you like Western hunting adventures stuff like that. It's the Mountain Project. They have a series going on right now. It's season five. They season season four was pretty awesome. But there's they're on season five, episode eight, and I've been following this whole season. I consumed all of season four. They're great videos if you want to see some some dudes just out there hunting, telling a great story, sharing their hunts. Go check it out. It's uh, the Mountain Project on YouTube. Go check it out. I love it. But when you're on YouTube, you can get sucked down some holes. I showed you that earlier with the this thing, dude. With the, uh, that's nightmare fuel, with the crocodile. Dude. Yeah, we got the crocodile. There's a warthog, and there's a crocodile. He's standing halfway in the water, halfway out. And there's like a whole ton of wild dogs, those African wild dogs, which mm-hmm. are scary. They're like land piranhas. They're like piebald nightmares. <laughs> First and, of all, pick a color. And they, they totally want this warthog. Uh-huh. And he's there's an alligator, or crocodile rather, right there just... Just Ugh. snatching him. Ugh. <laughs> the thing, uh, I, I don't like alligators. I don't like crocodiles. I think it's BS that this planet gets hit by a giant meteor, wipes everything else, and then those guys are like, nah, we're cool. <laughs> we're, we're just going to hang around. <laughs> I think that's a bunch You're of You're mad that crocodiles are alive? They shouldn't exist. <laughs> what purpose do they do except to give small children nightmares and they, a reason not to go near Crocodiles water? are the old, they, I think they haven't evolved in 20 million years. Like, they're the same. It means nature got it right, Brent. Yeah. They designed something. It came to that point and was like, no, I don't no think, further protection needed. I don't think dinosaurs should still exist. I think they've had their time. Their book end is closed. Let's move on. Dude, this is savage. When you watch this warthog, does he not see this coming? Look at that. And what's crazy is it grabs him right in the guts. It grabs, like, and yeah, just lower and smashes mm. him into right in the belly. How many hours do you think we have spent watching other animals eat other animals? On well, it's YouTube? funny is when the when when the uh, when the crocodile takes the warthog, the other animals are like the dogs are like that's eh, over. <laughs> <laughs> They're just like okay, let's find something else to kill. Yep. I've seen those wild dogs in Africa, like like a land piranha, get a hold of a a deer, a little, mm-hmm. and in like seconds, they've eaten it. Literally, they've eaten it. To, into, to, 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 into nothing. That's what happens when you grow up in a big family, Brian. You learn to fend for yourself and eat fast. You notice how the African wild dogs are nowhere near the water. Oh, they're like 30 <laughs> feet away. <laughs> they're, they're not dumb. Mm-mm. They're like, huh, we're going to lose this one. 
and then when it gets taken, they they're they're curious: is there going to be a scrap that floats up? But they won't go near that water. Like they they know. I don't like the idea of living. You know, because we can freely jump in the water anytime we want, pretty much. In in the United States of America, when I hear someone Unless say they're like talking about moving to another country, I think. But there's alligators. <laughs> Crocodiles. Crocodiles. Uh, for me, it's – and it's not that there's crocodiles. It's just that America is awesome. That's just one more thing that makes it awesome. We don't we don't have to worry about getting eaten by things in the water. We've managed to get rid of most of our dinosaurs. There's even very few fish that are going to pose a threat. And we don't have piranhas here in the United States. Like, at least that I know of. Maybe I'm talking out my – Maybe. Um, that is a possibility. Yeah, but it's crazy. Like, I'm not a huge fan of uh, getting eaten in the water, you know? So, you know, we do have problems, though, here in America and most well developed countries Mm -hmm. traffic jams. (laughs) You don't. You don't like China's uh, traffic system. Yeah, I showed you that. Yeah. <laughs> so China, I don't know if you guys have seen this. It blew my mind. China has a 50 lane highway. What do they call it? Oh, it's the Beijing something or other something something. Interstate. Macau Interstate Highway or whatever. Uh-huh. But if you just type in China 50 lanes, it's going to pop up. Now, <laughs> if, if that doesn't sound frightening enough, 50 lane highways, okay, it bottlenecks, shrinks down within like 200 yards uh-huh. into four lanes. <laughs> <laughs> so you go from 50 and then you chop out 46 of them and funnel it down into four lanes. Proof. Uh, China, like, they just, they <laughs> must think very little of their citizens because I don't know how people have to die daily. That or Chinese people just don't get the concept of road rage, which I don't think is the case. Oh, yeah. Yeah. I've been to India. That's the worst traffic I've ever seen in my life. Do they have, like, laws on the road? No. Or is it like Mad Max? It's Mad Max. <laughs> Full on Mad Max. Like, you have to see it. You have to see it to believe it. You can type and in people bit. just walk and they're dodging cars. Like literally it you're talking traffic that's flying by and they just start here's the thing. In America we have the pedestrians things to live for, yeah. <laughs> no the pedestrians have the right have pedestrians have the, the right of way. The right of way, right? Mm-hmm. So you step out on the street and it's their job to stop and let you keep mm-hmm. walking, right? In less and, developed and what, countries. What, what drives me crazy, in, even in America, is the person's like, well, I got the right of way, so here I go. And they <laughs> step out in traffic in front of a 2,000 pound car. And they're looking down at their iPhone. And they're looking at their iPhone. And they're like, I got the right of way. That right of way ain't going to help you when you get hit by that 2,000 pound car. Here's the deal. Nowhere else in nature <laughs> does the term right of way exist. Dude, it's insane. So, but in India, they literally just shoot the gap. They just, they're just, <laughs> they're just like, go. And they just go. And they're like doing the, you know, oh, 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 uh, you uh, know, getting out of the way. And cars are just not slowing down at all. Like, they're like, I hope you're not standing there when I get there. You know, <laughs> I hope you're moving. And I, I don't know how many people must die like that. I saw a family. That's I should, put this, I should post these videos from, from this. But there was a family, and this happens a lot. I mean, there's elephants walking down the road, with people riding them. And, I mean, just mixed in. There's, there's, there's donkeys and horses and uh, how does anything camels well, who cleans up the elephant poo nobody it just it just it just goes that elephant poo could be big as their car right. there's trash like ankle knee deep that just is everywhere there is there is no i've never seen anything like it it's it's truly i mean if you can think of the most filthy poor place in the world i mean it's right there it it, it blew my mind Blew my mind. I, I know what you're talking about, Brian. I have seen Slumdog Millionaire. <laughs> so, but it is, I, but I have seen a, a dad, I assume, riding a motorcycle, wife on the handlebars, a baby in her arms, and three kids on the back, along with like a kid on his lap, all on the motorcycle, weaving through traffic. 
and they all ride it as one. <laughs> it's it's Please. it's it's a circus stunt, and it's every day. They're like a bobsled team. Th- they're amazing. <laughs> yeah, they just, <laughs> you burn, they're like putting along, and you see this sort of whatever it takes to get from A to B. You know, it's it reminds me of us a little bit when we were growing up. We go to Home Depot because, or or the, the lumber yard because we need to get a bunch of lumber. We're the kind of family that would roll up and go, "Yeah, we need uh, seven sheets of plywood, uh, twenty five two by fours. And the guy rolls it out and is like, "Where's your truck?" And you're like, "No, nah, it's this Honda Civic." <laughs> and no, then, what was it? What was? The and then we find some way to strap it on the Dodger. The, is that what it was? The the diesel Dasher. The Dasher. <laughs> Yes, the Dasher. I remember Dad had that Dasher, and he would have to back. He would, when he parked, he would back up onto a hill. Yeah, because he would have to kickstart it every morning. Well, that diesel Dasher, one, the blue one was mine. Mom promised me she'd buy me a car if I didn't kiss a girl before I was sixteen. So you lied to her and got a car. No, that's a true story. And I didn't <laughs> kiss a girl until I was like a month, two months from sixteen. I might try, dude. I I put in the effort, but our Japanese exchange student took advantage of me. (laughs) (laughs) That sounds like some people's fantasy, Brian, right there. She was 17. I was 15. I blame her older, wiser, seductive qualities. But, uh, yeah, I threw that car out the window when the opportunity (laughs) came. Um, So... uh, That's a losing battle, Mom. She should have known. So Mom was kind of alluding to uh, a... A Mustang, a Ford Mustang, and then uh, and then she knew I had put in a lot of effort, on, and even though I tripped at the finish line, so she helped me buy like a five hundred dollar diesel Dasher, Volkswagen diesel Dasher, and it was actually in pretty so good shape. You kissed an Asian girl, and instead of getting your sweet Mustang, you got the Dasher instead. Why bring Asian <laughs> into it? I mean, well, I kissed a, a beautiful Japanese girl. Yeah. I would do that every day for the rest of my life. I'm glad I, I, I that was it. That was an easy trade, Mustang or or when you, or, when you're or a young first man, kiss, first kiss all the way. When you're a young man, women are much more girls, I should say, are much more forgiving about the vehicle. They're they're excited you got something from that gets you point A to point B. Oh, for sure. But it, but when once you hit that twenty year twenty year old mark, twenty two, twenty three, as you get older. The women care less about the, the that you have a car. They expect you to have a car, and then it has to be a nice car, yes. which I think is crap. I well, mean, it's the diesel dasher was was a good rig for me. Yeah, and I can just imagine Dad trying to shove a bunch of plywood <laughs> and two by fours in this thing. Hey, it was a hatchback. Well, there you go. We, we, it was made we, for that, we, obviously, and it had a little roof rack. So, ooh, roof rack. Don't knock it. It was a great little. It, it was like ninety nine cents. It's like 79 cents a gallon or something. Mom has forever. the newspaper from when I was born. Mm-hmm. And the, the, the front headline was gas, lot, or gas prices soar to 99 cents a gallon. <laughs> and I, the first time I saw that, I was like, you naive fools. <laughs> if you only knew. Right. Uh, well, folks, um, <clears throat> there you have it. We don't have any news. No mailbag to go over today. But we do... I uh, want you to know before we get into the podcast that we have the Mountain Ops Gritty Film Tour coming coming to a state near you. We're going to announce that, the actual dates and the website, where, where you can find that. And mm-hmm. then uh, we almost have some gritty swag up on the website. We're really Soon. close. So It might be up by the time this podcast comes out. That's how close we are to having it done. Yes. So check it out, folks. Uh, canvascutter.com, Gritty15 for a discount. Stay gritty, folks. All right, folks, welcome to the Gritty Podcast. I'm standing here with Seth Larson. Hello, hello. How are you, man? So good. Do you so feel good. a little ambushed? A, l- a little <laughs> bit. I didn't know there was going to be a camera in my grill. Here we go. I hope the camera doesn't this is... break with this uh, beautiful looking face. We're here with uh, Canvas Cutter. That's Seth right. from Canvas Cutter. That's right. We're in your booth here at the Western Hunt Expo, and I'm looking at these uh, different Canvas Cutter bed rolls. Mm-hmm. Uh, and you've been on the podcast before, but it's been yeah, a while. It has, and you've you've come a long way since the uh, since the beginning. We have. We're growing. We're growing, and we continue to to grow. So that's good. You have this original mm-hmm. right here, the Dominator. The Dominator. Mm-hmm. Okay. 
tell me about the bed roll real quick for people that are listening that aren't looking at it. Right. So most people don't like to go camping because it's such a pain to get everything packed up or they've gone out and they've gotten wet. It's been a negative experience. So the bed roll solves that problem because it keeps all your gear in one spot. It's ready to go when you are. And the canvas isn't a regular canvas. It's a marine canvas. So it's been double treated. It's mildew resistant. It's waterproof. The zippers are a heavy duty YKK zipper. Mm -hmm. So you will not have zipper problems. I don't know if you can pick that up on the, yeah, but, uh, you won't have zipper problems, but the zipper is not waterproof, but we seam seal it. So if you get wet, there's a problem and you need to either let us know so that we can fix it or you peed the bed. That's your two <laughs> options there. So. All right. That's clear. And then you yeah. got the poles in here. Right. So which... we have a we have a pole system, which just goes into a, a base mat, just clips into the grommet right there yep. in the base mat. You can throw whatever pad you want in it, whatever sleeping bag. We do sell mattress foam that fits in these. Mm -hmm. And uh, it does have negative side effects, like you don't want to wake up in the morning or get out of it. <laughs> but... And it's, it is awesome. I've used it a bunch now. And the convenience of it is unreal. You can just throw it in the back of your truck, and then you can yeah. literally throw it, on, throw it on the ground. Throw it on the ground. Throw it in a puddle. It doesn't matter. Sleep snow. in the back of your truck. We got snow. snowed on, rained yeah. on. Just oh, yeah. You, got, you guys did get snowed on pretty good. Yeah. So, yep. And the Dominator is a, it's a big bag. It can fit a lot of human. It's 34 inches wide. It's got a 17-inch sidewall, so it's huge, like I can show you. The sidewall on this thing is large. Oh, yeah. Right? It goes up to like my knee. It does. Yeah, it, it's large. So you can fit a lot of gear, a lot of person in that, and it's super comfortable. It, yeah. We haven't rated it for temperature, but it would probably, it probably adds 10 to 15 degrees to, to yeah. whatever you're What in. I like about it, since I'm a sleep alpha, is... <laughs> you are a sleep yeah, alpha. Yeah. <laughs> I am able to uh, sleep in because it sort of blocks the sunlight. It does block the sunlight. It blocks the wind. It blocks the weather. And if it doesn't, either so, you're doing something wrong or, or we'll fix it. It's so comfy. So it's handy. It's comfy. Um, I didn't... And originally, I thought, well, who would use that? Right. Because I can't, yeah. I can't put it in my backpack, and nope. I can't backpack with it. That's correct. And why would I set that up instead of a tent in my my normal stuff? But and dang, then you used it. Then and I like, used it. Oh, oh I, so, I kind of get that. <clears throat> I'll travel with like a little cot if I really want to get fancy. Right. In right. the back of my truck bed, and I'll roll that cot out, throw that thing on there, and I will sleep like a rock. Yeah. And it's it's just more comfortable because it comes with the. The mattress in there, dude. The mattress is so good, and it's you can you can go and get a cheaper foam. Yeah, you can get foam for twenty bucks, but it's not going to last very long, and it's not dense, so you'll touch the ground. This is literally the same same foam they put in the purple mattresses for yep. the purple mattress company. Oh, nice. Same foam, so it's got a five to seven year life. It's dense. You shouldn't touch the ground. Father Wisdom loves the cot life too, and uh, he's got two bags in his, two huge pillows, and I get to haul that thing around. But you're a good son. Yeah. Good well, son. Yeah, it I is nice to, to have your to. toiletries and everything kind of in there. And yeah, I, we're trying to get it so you can have a TV in there if you yeah. need to, a fold down shower, stuff like that. Nice. I'm just kidding. I made that up. But <laughs> but it is uh, it is handy. Yeah. You can now, make a sponge bath in there easy. You could. Yeah, you could sponge bath in it for oh, sure. Yeah. There's I'm coming snow. for him. Oh the my. bearded brother. Yeah. Oh my. Yeah, that's my cousin. I'm intimidated Jeff. by that. You have a beard. 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 I have a baby oil, beard. Baby. You do. Oh, We're gonna interview we'll him in a little bit. We'll grow it. So and then this is the fortress. Yeah, I wanted to ask you about this other so product because I haven't fortress, used this. The fortress is the same same canvas, same waterproofing, same zipper, same buckles, everything. The difference here is just size. So it's got a taper size. So it's 30 inches at the shoulder, and it tapers to 24. And the sidewall is 14 inches and tapers to 11. The idea is just to shave off a little bit of weight and to get rid of excess fabric if you don't need it, which I prefer this one, actually. I use this one a lot more. It's a little more diverse. If you put, I don't know if you can see down there by Father Wisdom's legs, but that has everything in it that you can see right here. It's got oh, the real? same yep, same climate down bag, pillow, air mattress, pole system. 
is rolled up in that. It's pretty slick. That's pretty yeah. tiny. That's yeah. a lot smaller. Yeah, the fortress with the canvas itself is five pounds six ounces, which, which it's not backpacking, but it's not. That whole thing is nine pounds. It's heavy, but like not ounces. not terrible. No, no, not terrible. The thing is, I still don't know if I could give up that. Like foam mattress no, over there. I wouldn't, like... and I refuse to. I have tested <laughs> air just so when we talk to people, I can tell them what it's like. And every time I say, "Why did I do that?" <laughs> I could have just slept like a king on that foam, and I didn't. But... So, how much do these run, Seth? Okay, so for the show, which this isn't going to be out by the show, I'm assuming it's probably out next week. But the Dominator, if you get the foam pad in the pull system is 451 and the fortress is 384 and that's with the that's with the pole system the foam pad the bedroll itself gotcha so okay and do you guys ever do any discounts or do you run any um the promotions we usually do are through our partners so if you follow one of our affiliates they usually have a promo code that that you can use to get okay. a discount but we ourselves do not put our bedrolls on sale. Gotcha. And lastly, what are the plans for the canvas cutter in the future? Oh my gosh, guys, I'm not joking. I mean, I'm again, super I get one exciting. That it's super exciting. So mm -hmm. on Mother's Day, we are going to be releasing a double wide, and it is so oh, yeah. rad. Oh, oh my gosh. yeah. <laughs> it's got a sweet pull system, it's got a little window in it. So you can run it as a single man and put your gear in it. You could probably cook in it, but we won't promote that. Just but or you and a significant other. So I can take and, my dog uh, with me. You could take That's your dog awesome. with you. Yep. And, That's awesome. Yep. And you, you two do that. get in there and cuddle. Well, I take the gritty wife. You can take the gritty wife and, <laughs> and get in I, there. Uh, show her a few new tricks. <laughs> that, I got a little got a little her. graphic, but <laughs> and, um, you you could you could yeah. So we're excited about that, and we have a. A few gear bags we're going to come out with soon, and we're we're in the process of working on and thinking through an ultra light one that will hopefully come out by fall. But we'll see. No Heck promises. Yeah. No promises. Sweet, Dang, dude. you guys are killing it. But yeah, yeah. yeah I got to say, um, I was skeptical. Mm -hmm. I was a little skeptical in the beginning, and then because um, you know I've had some canvas bat like yeah. covers. Uh, I think I had one from maybe Montana canvas yeah, or yeah. something like that. And it just never seemed like something I would use. Mm -hmm. Like I said, now I literally roll it out and use it on every trip. I pretty much don't road trip, go on the road. It's always in the back of the truck and I've used it so many times now I can't count. Yeah, and most people are skeptical and they ask the question that you ask, like, why, why not, not just set up a tent? But if you have a tent, you're packing a tent, you're packing a sleeping bag, a pad, it's all separate. It takes time to set up literally, and we timed this before, mm -hmm. it takes less than 34 seconds to unroll this thing. Yeah. And if you're getting in it, I unrolled it and got in it in less than 20 seconds. Well, and But if you set up the pull system, I'll bump it up to a, to 60 seconds because there are <laughs> slow people out I, there. I did go uh, when I was in Colorado and got in a heavy storm. Yeah. We we didn't know where we wanted to camp yet. And we were still scouting in the beginning of the, the hunt. And we had canvas tents mm -hmm. and stoves and all that. And finding a place to set it up and then take it down and set it up and take it down when we weren't sure where we wanted to be. It was really nice. We had enough canvas cutters for yeah. the crew. We just drove up in there and just we got back from a whole day of hunting and we just poop, threw them on the ground, got snowed on, yep. rolled them back up, threw them in the truck, went to the next spot. Well, yeah, and there's been so many times where we've gone expecting to hunt a certain area, got there, there's no elk bugling, everything's dead, you want to move. And if yeah. you spent half the day setting up a camp, you're most likely not going to go tear it down just to move. Right. But with this, you don't even have to set it up. Leave it rolled up in the back of the truck. Go scout. Go do your thing. And when it's time to go to bed, wherever you end up, unroll it. And if you're running cameras or whatever, it's just, yeah, super Being convenient. mobile. Super it's a big mobile. Deal. Simple. And gives you the gives you more comfort, I think, than most sleep systems. And, and the same protection 
against the weather. So, yeah. All right, folks. Check it out. Where can they find Canvas Cutter? Canvascutter.com. You can follow us on Instagram. It's Canvas Cutter at Instagram. I, it's kind of a cool logo. And uh, I thought it was, I don't know. At first I thought, well, that's a cheesy name. Right? Yeah. It's, not as cool yeah, sure. as, it's not as cool as Gritty. I, I know, other than the product's Gritty. But, it, yeah, okay, yeah, sure. <laughs> I mean, but, we could do the, the But now the I'm like, you know what? Cutter. It's pretty dang neat. Were there Thank any you. other names on the table besides Canvas Cutter? <laughs> no, because my father actually, we've only been, we've been doing it with a website and like legitimately trying to charge for it for two years, but Dad fa- did it for Father free Wisdom for did it for, yeah, he, he just sewed by himself in his basement for eight, this is 19 years now that he's, he's been doing it, just selling them word, word of mouth. And my mom had mentioned, well, you're cutting canvas and sewing them out of canvas. Maybe it's canvas cutter. And it just, that stuck. And so when he retired, we just kept the name. Love it. But the logo right. is pretty rad, right? Well, yeah, it is. What's uh, Instagram? <laughs> canvas cutter. Man, so uh, unique. Uh, yeah. 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 Canvas so cutter. Be diverse there. Yeah. All right, folks. Thank check you. it out. Canvas cutter. It's awesome stuff. Check it out. Thanks, Seth, for coming on the podcast. Thank you. As always, stay greedy, guys.